There is perhaps an ever-growing difference or chasm between religion and faith, the religious and the faithful. And Emily Dickinson was no stranger to that chasm. Uh, it, there might be construed, there might be considered, there might be interpreted a an ever-growing disreligiosity in Emily Dickinson's poetry, perhaps an ever-growing distance from the faith from Emily Dickinson. And that is something that pops up in Emily Dickinson's poetry a lot, uh, almost as often as death itself. But uh, when we look at Emily Dickinson on a grand scale, Emily Dickinson wrote 1,775 poems. That is a lot. This is a video exploring the poem Those Dying Then, which will appear in two separate playlists here on the channel. Number one, the Emily Dickinson playlist, a playlist of videos dedicated to the greatest poet of all time, but also the poetry discussion playlist. And in this video, what I hope to explore a little bit is that chasm, but also the author herself, her feelings on religion, her feelings on faith, her feelings on what she considers to be God. And I don't know that it can ever be said that there is truly an atheistic poem from Emily Dickinson, but certainly there are many poems which kind of argue against religiosity, and we're going to look at a second poem here, which is going to, uh, dis which is going to discuss that difference as well. But the poem, we'll just read it, we'll get into it this way. Those dying then knew where they went. They went to God's right hand. That hand is amputated now and God cannot be found. The abdication of belief makes the behavior small, better an ignis fatuus than no illum at all. I think it would be easy to consider this poem anti-faith. I think it could be easy to discuss this poem through the lens of atheism itself. I don't know that that is necessarily here. I think that faith in general is something that Emily Dickinson considered. I think that faith in general is something that, through the words of Emily Dickinson, is far greater than religion. And I want to bring up a second poem to really talk about this. Some keep the Sabbath going to church. I keep it staying at home. With a bobolink for a chorister, and an orchard for a dome. Some keep the Sabbath in surplus. I just wear my wings. And instead of tolling the bell for church, our little sexton sings. God preaches a noted clergyman, and the sermon is never long. So instead of getting to heaven at last, I'm going all along. In this poem, our speaker talks about keeping religion separate from faith. Faith here and attending the church is going to God's church as our, um, as our speaker paints it, nature is God's church. So if we go back to this first point, so one thing I don't really get into a lot on this channel is the numbering system with Emily Dickinson. Emily Dickinson wrote 1,775 poems over the course of, I believe, 47 years or, or somewhere about that. That's what we think from finding her, her works. Now, it is necessary perhaps to note that Emily Dickinson did not publish these, so they were kept as they were kept when she wrote them. She would file them away, little packets of poetry she had. This poem, the poem, so this poem is poem 1,551. Some Keep the Sabbath Going to Church is poem 236. How far apart were these poems? Look, if I asked you on Monday, your interpretation of God and faith and religion, all three separate things, probably you would give me an answer, bop, 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 bop. On Friday, your answer, bop, 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 would be notably different in most cases 
than it was on Monday. Why? This is something that the question of exist, existence in full as faith, lack of faith, and religion consider it, are, that's something we deal with every day. That's something that we have to look at, have to think of, have to interpret, have to live with every day of our lives. Whether we have faith, whether we don't have faith, whether we are, uh, are religious and have a certain faith, which is sort of lined up by the interpreters of a religion. Emily Dickinson did not care to take anyone else's word for what in, in effect is a very, very contentious sect of life, right? So, through Emily Dickinson's poems, we get some, some vision into how she felt about these things. Maybe that's important to you, maybe it's not. Maybe it's important to you that the poem says what it says, or the poem does not. Emily Dickinson, in her words, her own words, we have no reason to believe that all of these poems, and in the same breath, which of these poems, are written from a separate point of view. So, Taking Emily Dickinson's struggles with faith, struggles with religion, struggles with day-to-day -day life, uh, we can take this poem, Those Dying Then, and put on the lens of someone who lived at a time where religion was a very big deal, and those dying then, saying something like, and God cannot be found. That is a profound statement. What is, the, what is the interpretation to be had here? Is it that Emily Dickinson could not find God? I'm not sure. I think that if you were to put an interpretation like that onto this poem, it's a valid interpretation. I am more of the belief, through having read a lot of Emily Dickinson, that she had some idea that there was some higher power. There was something else in the universe besides us, something above us. Emily Dickinson's constant turning towards nature to find faith is something that I believe tells us very clearly that she believed the higher power outside of us was the natural order working as the natural order does. So this poem becomes a stark, stark contrast to the world in which she lived and operated, but not the poem, or not the world in which she existed. Emily Dickinson's existence was of extreme, perhaps even brutal, individualism. So to find a poem like this, which says, they went to God's right hand, that hand is amputated now, says to me that what she's talking about is religion and how religion had run, perhaps, amok. That we are living in times where there is sort of a great return towards religion as necessary. And I think one of the ways that religion works, insofar as it does, is that it is providing a guideline on something that is very difficult. The questions of the post-mortal is a very large question for many. Emily Dickinson seemed to struggle less with the immortal than the mortal. There is a whole lot less, in my opinion, questioning when she brings up death and what happens after. We have no shortage of poems where Emily Dickinson is talking about things after death. The questions of what happens in life are numerous. And I think that this poem, though it is easy to look at this poem and say that this is a question of the afterlife, those dying then, starting with, uh, basically, the entire poem is about afterlife not life. But I think that this poem 
is much closer to questioning what happens while we are alive than when we are dead. What happens when you are taking the word of someone else, which forces you to God's right hand? Then, um, then what happens when you are accepting faith as it comes to us, when you are accepting faith as it is found, not as faith, not as religion is crafted. And because of that, this poem strikes me not as atheistic, but more as a faithful poem, which is telling us, telling the reader, given to the reader, as a very heavy, perhaps ironically heavy-handed, disagreement with religion as it is run. What is happening for the afterlife during life? And this is just one example of Emily Dickinson's struggles with religion, but it takes a noted, a very, very stark difference to the poem that I, the other poem that we just read, Some Keep the Sabbath Going to Church. It takes a much different approach to this question, to this perhaps answer, in saying very much that perhaps it is your religion that is leading you to difference with your faith. So that is all I have for this poetry discussion. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. If you find yourself here by chance but not design, there is poetry on the channel every Monday, and I hope to have you back for the next one.